Good morning, everybody. I hope you're having a great Sunday. I hope you've just had some time to pray and to worship with your families and to enjoy time together. And now I'd like to give you guys a moment to have a lesson just for you. So for those of you who were earlier in the school year, back when we were all meeting at the church, participating in our Agape special small groups, either of your parents ended up doing things at both services, you probably recognize this book. So we were going through as a group during those special small groups, something called the God and Family Program. And I think it's a bummer that we haven't gotten a chance to finish it out together. So right now through the end of May, we're going to finish this program. And you know what, if you didn't get a chance to participate before, that's fine because I'm gonna have to fiddle with it just a little bit. And it's going to be made, I hope, just pretty easy to understand what we're going through, even if you've never seen any of the other lessons before. And what was cool about the fun things in this program was you had the chance to earn a medal. And I wanna let you guys know you are still gonna get that opportunity to earn your medals if you've been working on this program. I'm gonna give you the tools to do what you need to go through the requirements to earn your medal. And even if we're not meeting in that building for a while, and I honestly don't know how long, I'm gonna make sure that if you've earned your medal, you're going to get your medal. And if you're just joining us now, maybe you just happened to come across our videos here on online, or you went to Sunday school, but not these special small groups. I'm gonna give you guys an opportunity to earn the medal too. I'm gonna to make a couple extra special videos that I'm gonna post separately from the Facebook page onto my YouTube, that I'll have the lessons that you've missed and the stuff that you can do to meet your requirements. If you have any questions about that, feel free to email me at ashley at Park Avenue Christian org or to message me in the comments or on our Facebook because I'll help you out with that because I want everyone to get the awards that are working so hard for this and I don't want that to be one other thing in a list of stuff that we've missed out a chance to have. I can't promise we'll be back together again to earn them but I can promise we're going to do it. So the fun thing with these lessons is it takes the idea of God, a relationship with him, and a relationship with our families, and helps us think about it with a pizza. And instead of me taking a whole hour plus, like I've been doing for these small groups, we're gonna spend two weeks on each part of the pizza that we're focusing on instead of a whole hour long video. Cause I know you guys don't want to sit there for an hour watching the video. It's not as fun without the activities and the things that we do. And the last time we met a long time ago, it feels like now we talked about toppings and how the toppings can remind us of the different people in our family. Like I saw wrote toppings that had my daughter Mary's name and my husband Scott's name and my name and put them all over our pretend pizza. But toppings don't work really well unless we have cheese. I mean, cheese helps make everything stick together on a pizza. If you bake the pizza with just sauce and just toppings, you can, you can eat it, but like the pieces are gonna probably fall off and it's gonna be messy. The cheese sticks everything together. That way you get a really good bite of the crust, your foundation, and the toppings, and the sauce. And in our families, there's something that works as that thing that connects us all together, that keeps us moving, that holds us tight. And our cheese is our relationship with God as a family. Having this Christ-centered home holds everything together. If we all have the same basic values, the same understanding of what is right, what is wrong, it helps us with that. And yeah, even our rules 
And I know we don't always all like the rules, but the rules that we have that come from our understanding of who Jesus is, help us learn to live with each other and help us do a good job of focusing. So those of you who have been with us before and had these books, I know they're almost all at church, so don't worry about them. I'll still let you have them when we get back to keep. No, we do spend a couple times writing some things down and thinking about things. So I want to encourage you guys, if you have an extra notebook lying around your house, you could keep it for the next month or so as we're doing this and write down the answers to the couple questions I'm going to ask you. And if not, you can get paper and kind of keep them together so you can have those to hold on to. But I'm going to ask you a quick question. I just want you to kind of think about it. I mean, what rules are really important for our family? Do we need all those rules? So you can write down what rules do you think are important to have in a family? And then also, are there any rules you actually like in your family? And any rules you think don't really matter? I mean, I remember when I was a kid, I got in trouble for using the wrong marker. I thought that was kind of a silly rule, but every family has their rules and everyone has their stuff. So I want you to kind of think about what rules do you like? Okay, I probably like the rule that people can't be mean to me. You know, that's, that's a good rule. And what rules don't you? And the last question for you to think about right now is if you could change one rule in your family, what rule would it be? Would it be that you could have ice cream for dinner? Or would it be that you could stay up really late? If there was one rule you could change, which one would it be? So write down these three things on your paper. You don't have to write long essays or anything like that. They're just things for you to remember what we were talking about. So what rules are needed in every family? What rules do you like and don't like? And if you could change a rule, what rule would you change? Well, like I said, there are lots of families, lots of different people with the toppings that can all look different, but families that use that cheese, that connection, of Jesus and our understanding of him and following him and his rules, the principles and the things that he guides us with, all work in this special centered house. But you know what? Maybe rules seem really frustrating to you. And maybe you feel like there are just a lot of expectations, a lot of things people expect of you. And you know, it's a little sad but those of us in the church, people that have been growing up, sometimes we feel like we have more of those expectations on us, that you have to be perfect, that you gotta look like this perfect church kid and you can't embarrass your family and you can't have these problems. Maybe you feel like you just don't measure up. Maybe you feel like there was a problem or an issue or a thing you did that your, your parents or people that you know just it can't be fixed. It's too big and it's too hard. Well, Jesus talked about this. So I'm going to invite you to get your Bibles. I have my Bible right here and find Luke chapter 15. Luke is in the New Testament. And it's one of the gospels. It's one of the books written about Jesus. So those are at the front of the New Testament. If it takes you a second to find it, you can pause. That's the great thing about videos. So we are going to start at verse 11. He also said, a man had two sons. The younger of them said to the father, Father, give me the share of the estate I have coming to me. So he distributed the assets to them. So that part is when a dad back then would die, the family would have things split up and they would get those pieces of what the dad had. Families still do that kind of now, where the special things that belong to the family or the money gets kind of spread around people. 
but you never back then asked to get it before someone died. So I'm going to finish up for going back to verse 13. Not many days later, the younger son gathered together all he had and traveled to a distant country where he squandered his estate in foolish living. After he had spent everything, a severe famine, that means there's no food, struck the country and he had nothing. Then he went to work for one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his field to feed pigs. He longed to eat his fill from the carapods the pigs were eating, but no one would give him any. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have more than enough food and here I am dying of hunger. I'll get up, go to my father and say to him, father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired hands. So he got up and went to his father. But while the son was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran threw his arms around his neck and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father told his slaves, quick, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Then bring the fattened calf and slaughter it. Let's celebrate with a feast because this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field. As he came near the house, he heard the music and dancing. He summoned one of the servants and asked what these things meant. Your brother is here, he told him. And your father has slaughtered the fatted calf because he has him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and didn't want to go in. So his father came out and pleaded with him. But he replied to his father, look, I've been slaving many years for you. And I've never disobeyed your orders. Yet, you never gave me a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who had devoured your assets. You slaughtered the fatted calf for him. Son, he said to him, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we have to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So that's the story of the prodigal son. It's one that I'm sure lots of you guys have heard over and over again in church. But it teaches us something interesting. So as we're going through our book, there's something they wanted us to practice, which requires a group. But I'm stuck at home. So I took someone from my house, my husband Scott, to help me out with this. So one thing people learn pretty easily from the beginning when you're a little baby is if you do something, then something else happens. That's called consequences. Sometimes there are good consequences, sometimes there are bad consequences, but there's always a consequence. So like a baby, they cry. Their mom or dad is probably gonna come and help them out. There are different things that we find out. So I'm gonna ask Scott here a couple things and see what he thinks. And you guys think about him too. So Scott, if the younger son had decided to stay home, then? I think he would have been really miserable staying home. Uh, his outlook on life didn't seem to 
to flow with his, his current lifestyle of, of being uh, respectful and, and as uh, in servitude to his, to his father and being around his elder brother probably didn't help. Yeah. Which just would have very highly damaged the uh, the family dynamic. Yeah. Uh, such strife and resentment can just boil over, lead to fights, so on and so forth. It would it would have created, I feel, a very negative environment. Crazy house. <laughs> so, if the dad had been angry when the younger son asked for the money, then. I think that the, the, the father would have um, been just, could have justifiably been angry. And if he had reflected anger towards the younger son, um, that again could have led to very heavy strife and resentment of that son towards their father. Being the younger sibling in those days, is my understanding, is you don't get nothing. Um, everything, <laughs> Not a lot. Went, everything went to the elder son, the heir of the family name, so on and so forth. So we, you were really in that in that era at the mercy of your elder sibling because you were uh, unfortunately born second. And <laughs> as a younger sibling, I can say. <laughs> Not cool. <laughs> if the older son had been happier to see his younger brother, then... I think that would have created a more stable family dynamic. Uh, clearly the 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 elder sibling being upset that his younger sibling uh got out uh, got to go out and go live the party life uh in his uh, leap year um <laughs> and come back where the elder son slaved away in service of, to his father out of love and respect so on and so forth um I think, I think it would have spoke better volumes of the uh, family love and family stability. But the elder sibling's reaction was truly an, an elder sibling reaction. It was totally justified if... Now, had it been a more positive reaction, and, and that was the question, is if he had been more pleased to see his younger sibling, I, I feel that the father would have understood his son more. I think the negative reaction the, the son had when he explained to his father that, well, you let Billy go off and party in Europe for a year and I've been stuck here mowing your lawn. <laughs> uh, that illustrated to the father that, that he was unhappy, but he wasn't willing to express it earlier because for whatever reason. Yeah. So if he had been happier to see his brother it would have illustrated that there was no resentment between the elder son and his father. Because clearly there was, based on the reaction that one, he gave his father later in the verse, and two, how he reacted to his younger brother coming home. Yeah. So what if, if the younger sibling had done really well, if he had succeeded out in the world, then? I think that would have really hurt his faith, depending on how he succeeded. Because he went and he did a very negative thing, and to get a, a positive reaction and reward for doing such a negative thing uh, can never lead to, to good long-term uh, relationship on any level, whether it be with God, family, society, so on and so forth. So, if we break rules... 
or make mistakes, then... In this particular parable, it is a great illustration of, I broke the rule, I need to admit that I broke the rule, I need to ask for forgiveness if necessary for breaking the rule. And um, move on. Don't sit and dwell on the fact uh, somebody broke a rule uh, because they did, <laughs> apparently. Um, but sitting there and dwelling on it and rubbing it in their face and allowing it over their head is is no way to, to treat that person. Yeah. And as the person who broke the rule, uh, to move past it is good because it's not good for the, the human mind and soul to, to dwell in that guilt that you broke the rule. It's, it's just going to lead down some dark spiral and it's not good for you the person mentally, physically, emotionally, so on and so forth. Yeah. So what's interesting with this family and this story Jesus is telling is that we see that it is, it is a family that has some rules, understanding of how to do things and how to work things out. And we see the elder brother is someone that's following the father's rules and living the way the father wants him to live. But... There's forgiveness in this family. I mean, a lot of times in church and growing up in the world that we live in, we feel like we have to be perfect and we have to do everything just right. We have to follow the rules of the Bible to a T. And it's really good and it's really important to focus on what God teaches us. In fact, um, one of the things that I want you guys to start working on this week is learning the Ten Commandments. I could put a fun song that helps you memorize them in the description because in order to earn your medal, you have to be able to say the Ten Commandments to someone. You can say them to me or to your parents and they can tell me that you learned them. But understanding what God wants for our lives and following and living for them is a good thing. But there are two big issues we can see in this story. If you're not following things and you're not doing things right, your life can go down a pretty bad way. I mean, the, the younger brother was starving to death. He was lonely. He was sad because he wasn't living the way that his father had planned for him. And the older brother, he's following all the rules and doing all this stuff, but he doesn't understand how much his dad already loves him and how special he is to his dad and just being focused on the rules and doing everything perfect and that's a lot what's going on for us that there's a way God calls it to live and it makes our life good and it helps things run smoothly and it helps keeps families cohesive because these brothers were not cohesive they were not following together they weren't sticky together like the cheese in our pizza story but knowing that we have a God that doesn't expect us to be perfect because we live in a broken world full of sin, full of problems, and God can make us whole again through his son. And to focus on that. So I want you to get your papers really quick. I want to invite you to do this little activity. It's called a litany. Uh, we don't really do that in our churches very much, but it's an old fashioned way people have used to connect to God, kind of repeating things. So I want you to say on your paper, something in your life. So let's say for me, even though I get angry sometimes, then right underneath that, God loves me no matter what. Then you can do another one, like, even though sometimes I sin, and then write down, God loves me no matter what. And do it one more time and say something else that's going on. Even though I don't always read my Bible every day, God loves me no matter what. And you can make this list go on as long as you want, as short as you want. 
You can make these specific to you or to people in general, because we all sin, we all have these problems. And we know that God loves us no matter what. That's why he sent Jesus on this world to grow up and live that perfect life and die on the cross to forgive us of our sins. So we can remember that God loves us no matter what's going on. Just like that son that came back and asked for forgiveness, he's there waiting for us. So next week, we're going to do the second half of our lesson where we're actually going to work on building our pizza. So I don't think anyone took their pizza home. If you did, cool. I don't know if you still have it. Um, so this week, I want you to invite you to find some stuff at home and make a basic pizza look. Um, get cardboard or paper and color the bottom of the pizza. Color in some sauce and some toppings, however you want to do it. This is your project. And if you watch the other videos I'm going to post later this week, um, if you haven't done it, I'm going to explain how we originally did the pizza in church. So if you want to just do it like we did before. Also cool, but we're going to talk about cheese a little more. So bring some paper next week when you watch these videos. Uh, yellow is good, but you know, there's cheese in different colors. If you can't find it, cool. And some scissors and some glue or some tape so you can get it onto your pizza. And then for those of you who this is your first time working on the God and Family book, you know that in order to earn your medal, you have to do an activity after each of our lessons. And because this is, we're doing it for two weeks, you have two weeks to do this. I'll tell you about them again next week. Unless your parents let me know either by calling me, texting, put it in the comments of the video, emailing that you did the activity. So first thing you can do, you can pick out of these choices. You can read with your family, the God loves me no matter what litany that you wrote. Second thing you can do is tell your family about why cheese reminds us of families. Again, we're going to talk more about that next week. And the third thing you guys can do is pray with your families and take some time to talk about how everyone from the moms and the dads, the kids, we all make mistakes and pray to God about that. And I know right now when we're all stuck in our houses and really close to each other and we don't get a break like we used to. Probably all making little mistakes, getting frustrated with each other and having some angry moments. And it's not a bad idea for us to pray about it. So you can pick from those three choices and do one of those activities either this week or next week. And let me know so I can put it down that you worked on the project. So before we go, I want to pray for you guys. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for my friends, and I thank you for this time where we get to learn more about you and who you are. I ask that you help us remember to work together as families, and that when we have you in our lives and in our families, things are smoother. I ask that you help each of us to use our faith in you to help us understand how we can live in our families and work together. I ask that you help us when the times are hard and we get frustrated with each other. And I ask that you make great and happy moments with our families as we're all stuck together inside. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. So thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna see you guys um, Next week, I'm going to post those other videos, so let me know if you need to see them. And I'm going to try to post a video this week on here on our church's Facebook page for Park Avenue Christian Church in Montebello uh, for parents, a special little video just for parents. So I will see you guys soon on this channel, soon on this, this Facebook, and as soon as I can in person. Okay, bye guys. God bless.